Hello again. It's Monday evening again, seven o'clock. And I hope no one is snuck in, uh, snuck, stuck in snow or anything. So welcome to Boundary Mondays again. Let's see who is here and who is not here. And boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. It's such a buzzword nowadays, but it's also never more important than ever before. Plus, we can get an amazing amount of information in it, which can be overwhelming as well. Hello, 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 everyone. Oh, there we go. Right, so tonight, again, Boundary Monday. That's not the news here. And what are we actually dealing with topic-wise? So um, this time, it's going to be how are we dealing with all these overwhelming feelings that comes with wanting to set boundaries, setting boundaries, the, the feelings that are up and down during, before or after, because that's what stopped us in the first place of having them. So that's quite a bit of confusion. So let's see how we can navigate that a bit. So there's a few things that I got from different people. So one was, how do I actually create the boundary without anger being involved? I only put the boundaries out there when I'm angry and when I'm triggered or hurt, then I create it. And when I'm fine and when I'm good, then I struggle to put up the boundary. Then there's always the guilt of creating the boundary or pulling it through. Then also, then I can't, then I doubt myself if I'm overreacting, if I'm being dramatic, if I'm selfish, this is all like, oh, kind of thing with it. So first of all, the boundary game, especially in the early stages, it's flippin' overwhelming, it's flippin' scary, and you're most likely going to run one or run first before you walk towards it. But that's totally normal because it's unknown territory. So the whole thing is like, why is it so flippin' scary? Kind of like it's in partially already in the question is because we haven't done it because out of fear. Now it's about stepping out of our fear suit, also including ourselves. So the moment we take up space, we're obviously more seen, more heard, and all of that. And that's very often what kept us safe, not speaking up, not challenging, not taking up space, not having a voice. But that's the same stuff that ate us up, killed us all the time, gave us all the physical, mental, and emotional anguish and impact and, and toxicity and made us choose wrong people, choose the wrong environments or allow too much with it, even those that we love, because we just haven't done it. So at the crux is fear. So in short, healthy boundaries come from love because they include me and others and not having them, and uh, especially long term, is highly, highly toxic. And that comes from fear. So that brings us down to... A few of the main ones is as well, like, why is it actually so scary? Well, first of all, um, they are very, very, very scary because mostly lots of us didn't have them or they weren't safe to have them or there was a price to pay if you have them or it was part of our survival system. The more I please people, the less I am and the more I make sure others are okay, the better it is for me, the less backlash there is, the more... Uh, I will be left, the more I will be accepted, the less I will be judged. So we like kind of formed ourselves into what we think they needed and they wanted. And uh, so we've never really been ourselves. Now all of a sudden choosing ourselves is scary because we did all of that in the first place to either survive or to be, or to avoid something. And the avoidance was to avoid to be abandoned, avoid to be judged, uh, avoid... To, to have some kind of negative impact on it. So all of a sudden going like, hey, back at that, I'm going to have boundaries and you, and you, and you stay over there and you can do this and you can't do that. And all of you just go and bugger off if you don't like it. It's flippant scary. And that's not really how boundaries work any. So coming to the first part of it. So, um, the boundaries are there to have, it is a clear expectation and limits of who we are and, what is okay for us? What's not okay for us? And it's also the space of which I can honor, respect, and nurture you and me. And that's the scary part, the inclusion of us. Because the others have never been the problem, including them, because that's our knee-jerk reaction. 
including ourselves, feel so scary. So, and if I haven't done it my whole life, or if that was my, my whole survival thing, the problem is we're always going to sit with resentment. We're always going to feel we get the short end of a stick. We, we always feel that um, we're not seen, we're not heard, because we're not. We're simply not. So that's what the boundaries are there. So the boundaries are supposed to be clear expectations of limits and limits of me. So, you know, like, I better don't go to hiking with this nonsense, or I can't just go and talk anyhow here, or whatever it is, but it should be clear. And how does it become clear? You need to communicate it. There needs to be knowledge because what one of the ladies here was saying, or like one of the people I was saying here is like, I only create boundaries when I'm angry, hurt, or triggered. And when I'm fine and happy, I struggle with them. So what happens in that moment, that wasn't a boundary. That was not a boundary. When you are extremely angry, extremely hurt, and extremely triggered, that means there was no boundary, or there was a boundary that wasn't uh, reinforced like a boundary. And uh, it's just, oh, you allowed people to overstep the boundaries. Boundaries are there for clarity that it doesn't come to those, that it doesn't become unhealthy. They're like my little bodyguards. And they're kind of like, yep, you, yes, you know, this is happening, this is not, that's what we allow, that's what we're not allow, and that's what that is. So by the time you get, you get so angry and so hurt and so triggered, your bodyguards don't do their job. So they need a bit of free training on that. They don't need to fire them straight away. They're also learning in their new job. They also just got hired now. They need to get used to what you want or not. So your boundaries are your new bodyguards. And uh, they need to adjust to you. You need to adjust to them. So if you get all angry, this, that, and the next thing to an extreme, it means the boundaries were not in place. They were too porous. They weren't consistent. Or they weren't there in the first place. Boundaries are never communicated in anger. Ever. Because in that moment, it comes across as a punishment. In that moment, it's like, oh, because of whoa, 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 whoa. The delivery alone does not make it something that would I take long term serious unless you want fear from the people. But we don't want fear from the people. We want a uh, normal kind of like, you need to accept that. If not, I take responsibility for that. We actually need them to do nothing at all. It's for us to reinforce them. If they are, if they're not, it doesn't actually matter. It's how we align ourselves within that. The big fear and guilt stuff comes in like, what would they think? What are the consequences? What must I expect? What if somebody walks away? What if somebody doesn't like it? What if someone is like, I don't know, really cute off? What if someone is starting dismissing me? What if somebody doesn't talk to me? And you know what? You're most likely going to have to deal with it one way or the other, but you also don't have to jump into the deep end straight away because the more it shifts from the outside being the ones uh, that are actually, or the reactions more so are being the, the measuring stick of your worthiness and what you deserve or not, the more you start kind of like flopping that, the more you kind of like firstly, 99% of the time, nobody drops dead. Everybody's still fine. Everything is still running. Way more people adjust to it than they are not actually. They just didn't know about it either. Because not everybody does what they do out of bad intent. Simply, they never got the memo. They never got the memo. If you don't tell me that something is not okay with you, I will just assume what I do is okay. And half a year down the line, you're going to think I'm the biggest bitch in the world. And I don't even know about it. And I wonder what happened to you. So it really, really gives uh, options. So still, how do we deal with it? First of all, the whole kind of um, anger is one thing. Anger is not a bad thing because it gives you an indication like, whoa, something is out of sync. But don't let that be the motivation. It's the indication that I need to adjust something because it ain't there. It shouldn't be the motivation to kind of throw my toys out of the car. That means it's like, whoa, angry. Angry means mm, this is not what I want. Angry means something is not aligning. Let me check what that is and let me see what I have overlooked. Readjust, move. So this is really like check in, get curious, find out, readjust, move on. You normally run with it. And then uh, that's the opposite of boundaries. Then it, as well with the guilt is the other one. Ooh, guilt. 
So in this case, this world lady is saying, when I'm angry, it's there because it like took the lid off. And then, in, and then instead of like, okay, fine, it was maybe wrong that I want those boundaries. Now how I need to now communicate how to move forward with them to have them consistently in it. Because if you are mad with me and, and, and you tell me, this is how it's going to be. You never do this. You never do that. It's never a you statement either with boundaries. It's an I statement. I'm not going to be okay with this moving forward. So I will do this or that should you still choose that. It's an I. Boundaries means you take our power back. It's no more if you do this or if you do that, then I feel like it. This is how I'm going to take it in my own hands. And I'm going to be the custodian of my own feelings and responses. This is the empowering part about it. No boundaries means everyone out there decides what you feel when you feel, if you feel. You're always going to be pissed off about it because you've got no control over it. So, so with that, it's, it's like the guilt loop. Guilt is back. Guilt is uh, like, ooh, very often I hear, but I, you know, I'm really a nice person, so I don't really want to put boundaries because what if they're angry? Okay, let's play the scenario through. That would imply that having boundaries is being rude, it's being nasty, and it's being unkind, and you're doing something wrong. No, it isn't. What you're also saying, someone else might feel uncomfortable, which is, way more important than me being deadly unhappy for the last century. So if you're a truly nice, consistent, and authentic person, it got to include you. Kindness, nurturing, all of that with a, without us in it is always going to be a bottomless pit. And it's not true, Lev. It's not true nature if it comes at my cost. And I volunteer that. And I don't mean it in an ugly way. But but I'm nice, so I'd rather hurt myself before I hurt them. So you're still allocating hurt, because boundary gives choices. And I might not always react in the way you want to, but it gives a choice. I give you the choice to show up who you truly are, and I give you the choice to sit with your own uh, responses to that, just like I give myself the same choice. I'm also giving myself permission not to feel fully responsible to actually alter and regulate how you feel, but I'm fully going to be responsible for how I feel. So if I get half a panic attack after setting a boundary because it's new and I'm like worried, like, <laughs> it's not for me to remove the boundary because by now I obviously checked if it's a boundary I need to have or not. Now it's like, okay, I need some extra care right now. I need some extra nurturing. I need to remind myself why I'm having it and why I'm deserving it. So I need reassurance from myself. So if you know there's going to be a boundary coming up that I'm going to set, I know I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it. Prep for it. Prep for it. You know you're mostly going to feel uncomfortable. You have an idea who's going to respond how. And sometimes you're so wrong with it anyway. So just say like, okay, fine. I'm going to feel guilty. You're going to feel like this. I'm going to feel like that. And prep for it. So it's like, this is why I'm doing it. There is no bad intent. The delivery is correct, but I want this not too much. Uh, it's kind to everyone. Someone not liking it is okay. Because that will be the first time that you allow others to have theirs and process it. And it's the first time that you're going to allow yourself to have it and just kind of like, hmm, let me just navigate through it. Just sit with it and get curious about it. The fear is for the, their reaction, not because you don't know it's the right thing. But the key to boundary is consistency. I can't say to you, I don't allow that when, we, when I'm angry with you. And then the next few weeks, anything goes. And then I'm angry again. And then now you can't. But the other few weeks, you can. And then you can't. And then you can. And then you can't. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like telling a kid, uh, a little five-year-old to, to kind of like, okay, so today you have to wash your hands. And you've got to wash your hands. You never wash your hands. And everything's always dirty. And you think I'm here like, blah, 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 blah. So not maybe and we make the kid wash hands. And then the next few days, like, oh, wash them, don't wash them. I don't pay attention. I see it, but I haven't got the nurse for it or this and that. And then in between, I tell you to, 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 to wash your hands. And then I don't. And then wash them. And then don't. All I'm saying is, like, do what you want and make sure I'm not moody. That's what we teach them. But we're not teaching them like, hey, listen, there's certain non-negotiables. You're going to wash your hands before we have to know whatever it might be. It's just a very, very little uh, thing. But the base is the same, consistency. People don't hear 
kids, adults, and every adult is really just a tall five-year-old. And what you wouldn't allow a five-year-old, you sure as heck shouldn't ever allow an adult because they make choices. Kids learn. So back to front. You allow more than, uh, the adults get away with more than little ones. That's so back to front. Absolutely. Would you allow kids to speak to you like some of the people around you speak to you or interact with you? Would you? I doubt it. So what's the difference? Those are adults making choices, yet we find it harder with adults to say, hey, that's just actually not okay. And uh, if you just keep on choosing to do that, I will remove myself. So, so anger is, can be a good thing if it's healthy anger. Uh, if we let it fester for too long, then it is resentment. And then we need to check in like, okay, where did I overstep my own? So, because then anything out there is just a mirror for that we didn't, what we actually overlooked, and it's not about pointing fingers, be kind with yourself. It's hard. It's not easy. And I'm generalizing, especially like with women, of course, it also happens with men, but by history was always the women have to be the caretakers to nurture. Everyone else has to be okay first and so on and so on and so on. And uh, so there's way more conditioning towards that. And I'm not excluding guys by all means, but traditionally that has always way been more like you have to be selfless uh, uh, as a mother and as a wife and you're there to serve and you're making this and that. And there's kind of like, yeah, okay, there's all of that, but from very young, we already heard, like, just zip it up and do what you need to do. And now we're speaking up and it feels we do something wrong. It isn't. It's new. It ain't wrong. It's new. That's all that is. So where's this whole guilt thing coming from? We think it's wrong. We really think it's wrong. But the beauty about guilt is it only works if we believe it. If I'm accusing you now of mass murder and you killed 10 people in cold blood, you wouldn't have uh, an emotional response to it. Well, I hope not. Because you know it's absolutely not true. There's not that much truth in it. So your whole system is not going to have a response for it. You're definitely not going to feel guilty. Yet if I, for example, would say, oh, you're a horrible mother, you're a horrible father, you're a horrible child, you're a horrible person, you're unkind, you're selfish, something in you is going to hit that trigger point and goes, <gasps> and instantly. And you know what's the difference? You believe it to be true. You believe a part of it to be true. That's the only thing it needs, you believing it to be true. So on one hand, you're totally okay if I call you a mass murderer, which is technically the much bigger, bigger accusation. But if I say you're not always the kindest person, you have a reaction because you believe it. And there's the guilt trip, because you believe it to be true. So we need to have a look at that. What do I believe to be true about myself? And I need to look at that. So also like the pulling through is every single time that comes up and start with small boundaries. Don't jump into the deep end with 500 boundaries. Start with small ones and see how it feels. Let it set in. Give yourself a reference point of like, okay, this is actually not too bad. It actually feels really so much lighter. And it's like, and it's also the more you do it, it becomes like second nature, believe me. It's kind of like when kids start walking, they first crawl and they start like wobble on the feet a bit and start walking up. And then uh, after a while they're walking and then they're running and you can't stop the little buggers anymore. It's the same thing with boundaries. And they need to keep on getting up and they need to learn to balance. They need to keep on walking and they will do it. And we're doing it. It's new. Does not mean it's wrong. Some people will like it, some people won't. But you know what? Some of them also just really need an adjustment time because they have to now integrate a new angle to you. And it's just new and people don't really like change. Does not mean it's wrong. So the guilt is really when it comes up, come and it comes up, just sit with it. Oh, interesting. There's guilt. Hmm. Hello, guilt. Don't judge it and run with it and flock yourself. Knowledge for what it is. Oh, this is anger. Hmm. Why am I so angry right now? What's going on? Get curious about it. Or like, oh, I feel so guilty. Okay. There's guilt. This is interesting. Why is there guilt? Am I actually doing something wrong? And I just believe I do something wrong. Would I think it's wrong when my best friend would do it? Get curious about it. And I'm like, oh, this is because I set a boundary and I'm worried. Okay. Got it. And then come back in. So this is literally kind of like get out of the knee jerk reaction and get curious about what you feel. So also let's not forget not having boundaries means you've always been doing, doing, doing and regulating everything. So your first go-to is action and adjustment instead of like, let me sit with it and just see what that, what is that? 
what is it? If I don't know what it is, I don't even know what I'm dealing with. So the, the whole anger, anger can be very healthy. Anger can be a great accelerator as well, but don't use it against yourself. So also with um, some people might react negatively. You don't know who is it acting negatively and unhealthy at the moment? You. You know who is harmful to you for now and for quite a few years most likely? You. You know who is unkind, unloving and uncaring towards you for the last few years? You. That's the one you should uh, uh, care about what they think. You. And not in a selfish way, but in, in a, okay, I must just like the word selfish. It's a little bit of a story to it. When I came to South Africa, I didn't speak a word of English. So I learned my English from a whole bunch of kids on top of it all. So when selfish came up, I first heard self wish. And I kept wondering, like, why do they always use it in a negative way? Because selfish sounds good to me. I wish to myself what I wish on everybody else. So, so that, that's a good thing. Uh, after a while, I figured out there's no W in the middle and how it's used and why it's used. So, but it's always kind of stuck with me because it was very often used as an attack to, to manipulate people. And I didn't like that one bit. So I like self-wish. So I kept on using the self-wish. And this is what it is. And I would like you to look at it like it. Selfish means what I do is unkind towards others and unfair to others and myself and does not come from a place of love and care. So what we're saying with that, loving and caring for myself is not coming from a place of love, which is absolute manure. It's bull. How can I genuinely love someone else if I don't even have it here and give myself permission to do that? To get self-wish. I wish upon myself and I wish to implement in my life what I'm already bringing to everyone else because that's called balance. So the selfish is out of your dictionary now. It's self-wish. It's the amended dictionary according to Heike Sim. I'll let them fight on it. Who cares? And this is literally, if it doesn't include you, if you're not giving yourself permission to bring to yourself what you bring to and others, it's not coming from left, no matter how we dress it up. So, um, oh, Kelly, I so tried with the manure thing. There's manure storm because apparently you can't say shit storm and stuff like that. But oops. So, like, it's manure. So, uh, but the thing literally is guilt is only if you believe it. So, why do you believe crap about yourself? Why do you believe it's wrong? So, so challenge yourself. It's like, where's this actually coming from? Because if my friend would do it, if my kids would do it, I would be right there as the wing woman or the wing man. And, like, you'd go and tell them. Yet when it is us, you've got, oh, don't do that. you've got to get our worthiness game up. And also anger is not the time when we introduce boundaries. This is very often we might recognize, oops, I need one. And sometimes things come out of our mouth that we kind of like, oh, I should have brought that in maybe before I explode. But then you can still kind of, okay, fine, I may be over-delivered, but this is what's happening from here onwards because that's important because I do not want this version of myself or us ever again. So I refuse to get into that version again. It takes also, it takes prepping like any new skill. It's a new skill. It's a new skill. When you learn to drive a car, what did you do? You learned it. You got into it. You kind of like most likely suck the driver's parking. Maybe still do. I don't know. But you had to learn the skill. You had to practice. You had to get in. You had to do some theory on it. You had to just learn it by doing. You cannot think your way out of a feeling. You've got to walk through it and replace it. And you're so worth it. You're totally worth it. Don't let a bit of, of fear of uncertainty what other people think stop you from stepping into your own power. Because if you really look at it, firstly, we give other people's way too much credit for even thinking. And then on top of that, they're definitely 90% of the time don't think what we think they think. So there's a lot of thinking, they're thinking, they're thinking, they might, that I could. Exhausting. You know what? Be yourself. You can do that. And at the same time, not just can you do that, you can actually maintain it. And with the people around you have a true choice. This is the version. This is Hackle. This is how I know how she's going to be day in, day out. And this is, I don't know what I can expect. Now, people have a choice if they want me around, if they don't want me around, if I want them around or not, because there's not this tomorrow. And I mean this, but I don't mean that. This is what it is. And it does not mean it's rude. It does not mean it's not loving. It does not mean it's care. It's not caring. But it is guaranteed authentic. Guaranteed authentic. Because I would never ever give you a chance to actually meet me 
if I'm not in it. You wouldn't even know who I am. I'm setting myself up. So this is literally, you know, what? let people have you. The whole gloriousness and beautiful contradiction that you are with all the up ups and the down downs and the left and the right and everything in between. And it's a very freeing space to be. So the guilt, look at it. Why do I believe this about myself? You don't believe you're mass murderer. You okay if I call you that. But the other stuff, you don't even question that. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. So sit with it. Have more self-compassion, self-love. If you know you're going to go a longer trip, if you know you're going to have to learn a skill, get more snacks, get more stuff, know it's coming, get ready. So do prep for it. Just prep for it. And also, you are not responsible on how people react to it. This is literally other people's reaction to anything is theirs. My people to, uh, my people, my, my reaction to whatever is solely mine. So if you come and swear me, or if you come and smile at me, if you come and give me coffee, or whatever else, it's always for me to, my reaction is solely my responsibility. And nobody can make me mad or make me this or make me that. I need to volunteer that. That's on me. But once we have boundaries, it's way easier to keep those out. Remember, train your bodyguards. Boundaries are your bodyguards. They work for you. Don't let them slack off somewhere and only come out when there's a bomb going off. You have got to be alert before that. Train your freaking bodyguards. That's what they're there for. So... And look at the shame stuff. So first of all, repeat, repeat, repeat. When you find yourself in a moment, first of all, take a deep breath. Secondly, if it was someone you dearly love, would be someone you dearly love, your kid, your partner, doesn't matter, someone you dearly love, there would be the exact same situation at that moment, what would you want them to do? And whatever that answer is, you go. If you're scared, if you have heart palpitation, if you are sweating buckets of whatever you're sweating or other orifices coming things at, you walk. And you do that because you deserve this as much as you wanted for the person you love because that person's worthiness you would never jeopardize. And you need to relearn that. So you go there, you set your boundaries. And if you're scared, of course you will be. It's the whole idea. If you wouldn't be scared, it wouldn't be big enough and it would be the wrong boundary. So go for it and get yourself a boundary buddy. Get someone, get like a partner in boundaries and self-wish and go like, oh, this is the boundaries. And this is what I'm trying to get uh, going here. And I need consistency. So should you see or, or should I get forward? Re- bounce off. Everybody can adjust boundaries as well. Even if we have boundaries, they need adjustments. This is literally it. So take a deep breath. It's how you feel who you are. Your job is to deliver them. Be clear about them. Make sure they're coming with the right intent and they're delivered accordingly. The rest is the recipient's thing. That, that's their thing. They're not liking it. It's the whole idea. Some people will really do you a favor with removing themselves. Let them. Let them. Keep on reminding yourself why you're doing it and why you're deserving this. Deep breath. Yes, murder is still a crime, so we're not doing that. That's why we have our bodyguards. Don't wait till you get angry and set yourself up. But consistency is the key. So yeah, it is scary initially. It's going to be a heck of a parade once you get through the first part there will be stumbling blocks don't beat yourself up just a chest that's fine but just keep on doing it anyway because you're worth it and one of my favorite people Brene Brown she does a lot on, on, on the whole thing as well she says daring to set boundaries is about having to the courage to love yourself even when we risk disappointing others so we might risk it because we don't even know if it's true so you do you your boundaries are your bodyguards. And either way, you pay them. You can pay them with joy and balance, or you can avoid a, uh, pay them with, with, with fear or in, and with resentment. So I would get those buggers to work. Right. So I hope you guys got something from it. Tell you, let's let you make a little list. Write it down. Boundary one. That goes on. Step one, step two, step three. Give yourself the tools. Give yourself the tools. You know what really helps when you're specific people? Uh, and uh, that you have one specific boundaries with, back on their phones and things, desensitize the knee jerk reaction. You go, oh, he, she or he is. Put um, a photo or something on it, a picture that desensitizes. And um, 
I used to have a person in my life quite a few years ago and I had to desensitize first to deal with it. So I changed the name and the picture that was on it to a monkey picture and the, the ringtone was that circus tone is like doo, 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 doo. so it went from like <clears throat> there's the person to like <laughs> the monkeys in town again. Of course the circus is in town. No bananas, no popcorn, not our show. So it really helps to get away from the initial nature reaction. So find a picture, find a like whatever a renamed person, do whatever you need to do that. It's taking your power back. So you all have a beautiful evening and send me questions. So all the best and boundaries are your bodyguards. Don't let them slack. Let's have love.